uh, my lived experience overseeing a department of design. I'm also part of the uh, business faculty, but a lot of my time has been with the department of designers because we've had a change in um, our how do I say, goals um, being an OBL institution uh, when we had a change in management about three years ago. And that's the point where I came in and joined and was an opinion of university. So this is basically the story I'm about to share. Um, I'm not sure whether you, you've got this. I, I reckon you've got this in your program book. It's a snapshot of what has happened throughout the past three years. And it sounds a little bit dramatic because there were many dramas. There were many character developments, uh, many plots and subplots, and plot twists, and climaxes and anticlimaxes. And those are the journey. And my, my um, focus is more on how to manage people. And if you were to look at the last line, uh, I'll read it. His story describes a testament to what can be achieved when resources are scarce, but the desire to excel knows no bounds. It sounds very positive, no? Can you see the problem in that? Anyone see something problematic in that line? <laughs> the desire that excels, to excel knows no bounds. So basically, the problem is when you get a lot of people motivated, you've got to help to find a way to contain that excitement because it can go all over the place. It will eat up your energy. It will eat up your headspace. And not, you're not going to be focused to, be, to get things done on, on, uh, you know, on time, for instance. Right? So a lot of exploring, experimenting takes a lot of your... Your, your time and your energy. And it also takes away your focus from your day-to-day -day operations. So a lot of managing of people and emotions. Thankfully, that's what I'm interested in, <laughs> emotions. So very quickly on the background. Um, the first thing is uh, we were established in 19, no, 2007, right after OUM. We're very small, we're in Penang if you're not familiar with WOU, because that's quite normal, you know. Um, a lot of people, when they start talking, they mistake you know, where I come from, and they say, you're from OUM, and I have to keep on when they say, it's what was said, it's different. Um, but the good thing is, because we're in Penang, um, that's where the, you know, the semiconductor industry is, and we have a lot of um, affiliations with people from the industry and they are also part of our faculty. And that's what makes it different from OUM, right? So we are same in terms of being um, pioneers, so-called, in ODL, but our, our faculty uh, makeup can be quite different and our approaches may also be different. So we started off like everyone else. We've got PDFs as sims. You can see very, very quickly. Right? So it's a matter of functioning like a post office. You put your PDFs online on the LMS, <clears throat> and the students download it. So any other reasons for going online is maybe to do quizzes, for instance. Right? So nothing else. Um, submissions of assignment goes into the um, OAS, which is part of the registry system, because the moderation is done there. So the function of um, the LMS wasn't really extensive. It's, in fact, it's very minimal. Um, a little bit, little bit later after that, we had the LMS in the version of flipbooks, which is still relatively PDFs, but it's a little bit interactive. It looks like a book. You got a feel of the book there, which people, you know, may like more. Um, so, when I came in, what happened was uh, they, they were using Moodle, and at one point, the management said we need 
to look at other platforms and see whether there are other platforms which can be more helpful and interactive and there's more opportunity to be um, providing an, uh, an engaging kind of experience to students or learners. Um, and so from Moodle, at the point I came in 2020, uh, right during the smack of pandemic, uh, they changed it to D2L Brightspace. Have you heard of that platform before? It's Canadian based. Um, in Malaysia, I don't think anyone else is using it, but in Singapore, uh, the Polytechnics, SMU, uh, SDI, they're all using it. So, so we don't have any, anyone else testing that uh, platform in Malaysia. Right, so the other challenge was that ownership. If you belong, if you know how designers are and creative people are, right? What they do is the, the sense of um, uh, proud of what they do, their work, right? So what happens is that um, each course is assigned to a dedicated designer. You don't have a team working on one course. You have one-to-one, -one, one instructional design, one graphic designer doing one course, that's it. So the problem to that I saw is that it will take up time. There will be backlogs. There will be uh, rather slow learning of um, adopting new things, right? Because you're still doing everything on routine and repetitively, the same kind of design, what you know best. And then we've got long-standing SOPs, and the SOPs could go back 10 years before that, which has never been revised nor changed because there was no, no need to make these um, changes. Work dynamics. Within the department of a dozen people, there were subgroups in there. Because again, being dedicated creative people, they're very independent and they like to stick to their own um, colleagues who work well with them, who team up with them, right? So in this sense, um, in terms of sharing and collaborating, it was there. Transparency, I've got no idea what you're up to. I don't know what your plans are. I don't know if I'm doing more work than other people. All right, so again, it's all very siloed within a small department. And we've got trust issues as well, because not only we're not, um, we're not in the know what others are doing, we have our preferences on what kind of softwares we want to use to design, you know. Uh, resources are not well kept in terms of, you know, subscriptions and all that. So it's, it's a lot of uh, costs as well as um, time wasted uh, in terms of producing materials. Departmental stru structure, we were very centralized. Centralized means one person makes it the ultimate decision, and you do expect to be instructed or told what to do, uh, which is probably from where I come from, that's not the best way to roll. I'll show you the initial structure that we had. You can see it. So it's big enough, right? So initially when I came in, there were an ODL lab. They were on their own. They've got high-tax uh, equipment and devices to use. Um, they're very secretive as well. And then we've got, okay. and then we've got the LMS administrators who were previously the structural designers themselves, but they were taken in and they were asked to learn up the Brightspace platform. And then we've got the courseware development, which basically are the instructional designers and the graphic designers. Okay. Right, and then there's reference person. There's no reference person. Reference person is actually the head of the department. That's it, full stop. Okay. And legacy. So people were not actually doing things because they need to do it that way. So nobody questions anything. Um, basically because it's very bureaucratic as how it is in academic institutions and any academic institutions. And so it's doing the things because that's how we've been doing it, not because it's that how we should be doing it. 
And lastly, staff capacity. We find skill copy because what they know, or half the things they know, would to me would be obsolete in a couple of years, right? Um, knowledge and skills were were not updated because again they were very comfortable in just producing as and how they've been doing things. Exposure is not there. They don't see what other people are doing. Um, again, because they've been doing something very routine, day in, day out. And values, it's the same. Whatever culture that has been in there is intact. Okay, no matter what has what's going on going on outside. And you know during the pandemic, everybody's gone online. Right? So we took things for granted. Um, we did not expect that everyone now will be doing OTL like in this room, right? We thought we were players, the number one player, the, the pioneer. And so we were very lexidical in the way that we, we work. So in a nutshell, the transition process, the first thing when I came in, I wanted to get to know everyone at a personal level. It was a very risky thing to do because already um, we had a new management and the new management were bringing in new people. And you know, you can feel what the resistance was in like that kind of situation, right? Um, at the moment, 50 of us, 50% 50 of us are new. 50, the other 50 are, has been there for maybe 20 decades. So you can see the difference in terms of values and culture as well. So first name basis, everyone's supposed to call me by my first name, Dewey. It took over a year, a year and three months for people to just call me Dewey, not Dr. Dewey. I had a swear jar. Every time they see a doctor, they have to be wondering it. We had a lot of free lunches from that swear jar, right? So it took a while for them to be able to communicate with me very comfortably, be able to be vulnerable, be able to admit. And I felt that although it took such a long time, it was well worth it. Number two, we had Magic, Magic from Cyberjaya, who were willing to do a workshop on design thinking for free, because I needed everything to come for free. Remember, we were very frugal. We still are very frugal. Um, so in the design thinking, um, also, every time the practice is every time we learn something or we have a meeting or we have a session, we need to use a software or a tool, a new tool for everyone to be comfortable, you know, trying out new things without being very apprehensive. So for magic uh, session, we had the Myro, Myro board. Are you, are you guys familiar with that? Myro discussion board. If you're not used to it, it can be very tricky, but after lunch, the whole morning was, you know, people struggling to use it. But after lunch, once you're very comfortable, you start to open up personally as well. So we have people posting about weaknesses, posting about challenges, posting about what they hate about each other's groups, you know, things which came out very naturally and not taken personally. So it was a very safe space. So I knew from that moment, we had psychological safety, but we also have emotional safety. That means you were able to voice out your opinion and you felt safe without being judged. But you're also able to, to vent out your frustrations and say that you don't know something without being being, um, without feeling um, bad about it, right? So that, that again, was a very um, insightful session. And then I had a free session also conducted by a project manager from a multinational company in the UK because I was extending, you know, to uh, my network and saying, can anybody do this pro bono for free? <laughs> Oh, is it? You know, so I wasn't um, shy about asking for help. 
because that's all I can do when you're, you're, you're you know, very tight on budget. So we had somebody from Wessex Waters, UK, who's part of the YTL actually, came in and conducted a session with my colleagues and I on what is Agile and what is Scrum, right? So from there, of course, all of us were, this is something very new, and we have no idea how to implement it or apply it in our own kind of job that we're doing. But again, it opened up um, ideas, and it opened up this motivation that there are tools out there to help us. Now, this is due to our bright space. So this is basically um, version version 1.2. Flexland version 1.0 is based, it's a migration of all those uh, PDFs from Moodle to Brightspace. And Brightspace, uh, for Brightspace, we have our own uh, name for it. We call it Flexland, WOU Flexland. So this is version 1.2. Version 1.2 is digital digitalizing the content and also putting in a little bit of uh, motion in it to cut the monotony of uh, learners. So this is our earlier version. So what we're doing is that we're working within the constraints of the LMS but trying to add on to it to suit our learners. Okay, so what we learned from here is that there is still a lot of scrolling, scrolling up and down, especially if your um, content is lengthy. Number two, assigning a roles designate. What does that mean? So we had a restructuring, and you saw the first structure just now. So what happens here is that All right, can you see? All right, for what happens here is that I was trying to tell people or, or, or tell my colleagues that there is a difference when I say I need a flat organization. You've gotten used to calling everybody by their first name. So now you have to look at everyone at the same level. There are sen seniors, but we put everyone as a reference person, and then we look into the needs that we have in order to uh, be able to achieve the new mission of the department, right? So from the design thinking workshop, we came up with an agreeable mission for the department and what we want to complete, co accomplish and what the purpose is. And from there, this structure was, was designed. So we've got a new um, role, somebody plays a utility player, and we've got a scrum master. Now, mind you, all these colleagues of mine do not really do not have the knowledge or skills. But what we do is we put the role as a designated role. That means if you're able to fulfill this role, you're able to come into these shoes, you show us, you demonstrate to us that you have some knowledge and some skills that you built along the way, HR will then appoint you into this new role. Right? It took us nine months, fairly quickly, for all of them to play this new role. And it was, um, how do I say? It was a lot of commitment within hardly, within that nine months, each one of them would have completed over a hundred hours of training, and these are self-directed learning. So you just imagine the motivation, the appetite that has been built from that. This is when I say when your appetite is too big, you have to start uh, managing this appetite because it can become quite problematic sometimes. So they use LinkedIn courses. LinkedIn gives you one month of free subscription if you subscribe to premium account. Everyone was forced to make a LinkedIn um, account so that they can get one month free. 
for paying for one month fee of uh, learning online. So after two months, they just stop the sub subscription. So within that two months period, every day, one hour at the end of your work day, they'll go in and they complete the course and you get that uh, completion uh, certificate from there. And it was one, it was, it was really truly touching because at the end, everyone had so many courses completed and they were able to learn and teach each other. So I did not tell them exactly what they should be learning. They should look at the role and they should find themselves learning things that they need to learn. So everything is self-directed. So this is building up the understanding that what you need to design online on the LMS later is how you have been experiencing so far as a learner yourself. So it's transferring your own experience to fulfilling the learner's needs later. We've got leadership assumed. No matter where you are in terms of seniority, you are a leader for something. So it could be, you know, you could lead in terms of uh, managing subscriptions and resources. You could lead in terms of um, taking care of recording multimedia. Um, you could lead in, you find your things to lead and you become the reference person for them. And nobody has any qualms in going to anyone and say, I do not understand this. Can you spend half an hour to teach me this? And I do a lot because I'm not from the design background, like Dr. Zhu. So I learned a lot about designing from everyone in my department. And this is where vulnerability really plays a role, right? If you don't know, you say you don't know, nobody will judge you. And this is how you're able to really connect and really um, address any challenges um, very, very quickly because there's no hidden agenda and nobody's trying to, you know, be um, worried about people thinking that they're not suited for the role, okay? We also have weekly stand-up. It started with daily stand-ups. This is from the Agile and Scrum uh, training. But we have weekly stand-up, and what this does is that it, it allows transparency. Everybody knows what everybody is doing. Not only that, this is taken from Teams, yeah? So we use Teams. Right. So on Monday, usually on Monday, they check out, and then they check in back. So what we can see from here is that uh, we can see something which is stuck. Anybody stuck in something? Uh, or it's taking a long time for them to do? Anybody can just come in and help out that person. Everybody does this on a voluntary basis. We are aware of who takes a long time to do something. We're aware of somebody doing things that we don't know. And it's a lot of sharing and complimenting each other. So there is no... Um, Everything is out in the open. Okay, so Teams has been very, very um, useful for us to share anything. Reform processes. So as we go along with restructuring, we also included UX research because before this, we were depending a lot on just what the platform has to offer us, right? So we're plonking in things in there, thinking that that's how learners want it to be. But then when we started prototyping, we started including plugins and a lot of extensions. We thought, you know, why work on so many things when people are not even using it? So we started UX research. Somebody took the lead from that and became the leader to do the testing and testability of the prototypes. And those, again, was all self-learning. What is UX research? How do I test prototypes? What is prototypes? How do I come up with a blueprint? That was learned by the person who took, who took the lead. So the first prototyping that we did was for version 2.0. Yeah, that's 2.0. So it's opening up because uh, open, opening up the container because there was um, 
complaints about navigation on the platform. When you have a lot to offer in your contents, um, we added more, more sub-menus for people to, you know, to ease your navigation. Right? We put things in containers again. So you see that this, it cuts scrolling up and down. Oh no, five minutes. <laughs> All right. Jump shots. HR recruitment, we change the processes for other departments as well because once we ask, um, you know, when we recruit anyone, we were the first department to also be able to recruit remote staff because if you want somebody with the right skills, you can't force them to relocate. So there's a lot of allowance other departments have to, to, to make for, the, for, for us at home. Um, we also do a mid-year and regroup, so no matter how, you know, how much you're slogging throughout the year, we make, it, we make, it, we make some time, mid-year and end-year, to regroup and to explore new things. And of course, to recap uh, what we've done for the year. And then we've adopted new work philosophy as well. And this is an example of the project management that we're using. So this is basically a, um, a, a brief, a smaller one compared to things like Asana and Trello. If you guys are familiar with those kind of softwares for bigger management, project management. Has anyone used ClickUp before? Or any kinds of project management for your work, for your daily work? You have Asana? Right, so it's not, it's not. So the challenges are, still now, it's between internal capacity building, which takes a lot of time and a lot of self-drive uh, versus recruiting. <coughs> we've, um, we've tried recruiting people from um, outside of Malaysia, um, right now it's not working so well because of the time zone and because of the culture as well. So it's always try and test um, on our on our end. But we've got a lot of part-time students from everywhere doing um, helping us in terms of coming up with animations and whatnot. So they're paid at um, minimal wage and they're doing it part-time so they put in about two three hours a day and that's it but we've got about ten of them trajectory and arbitrary change okay never change because you need to change that's that's my advice do not add on because you need to react to something you must be able to change on trajectory. That means you must have a long-term planning and you change because of that long-term planning. Otherwise, it will take up a lot of what you put in and it goes um, to a lot of wastage. Adopting agile mindset versus practice agility. You may be practicing it, but you're not embracing it. It doesn't work. Um, you need to have that mindset and to know why you need to change things or be be very nimble. We are small, we're able to be very nimble. But there's a cautionary side to that. You're not changing for the sake of changing. It's changing because of certain purposes. And you must always be aware of that. Interdepartmental calibration. Right now we're extending it, or we're trying to extend it to the faculties as well, so that they can get on the same uh, project management software with us. Um, we're still trying. <laughs> Platform development, so we're now at version 3.0. I'll just show you 3.0. Okay. So this, To be able to do version 3.0, this is how we're going to expand. So it's not just um, 
instructional designers who then became um, digital learning designers. That's the reassignment or re-rolled. Re, um, uh, we also have the graphic designers who then became our know, UIs. Okay. Uh, we're adding on, on a full stack, uh, front end and back end, one minute. We've got the learning analyst to add on to our administrator. Um, data scientist is going under chancellery now. Hopefully we get one. But this is how we need to expand if we were to pursue our mission to have version 3.0, we've done one to three now. We've done interactivity, inclusivity, accessibility. We're pushing into gamification, immersivity, and scalability. Um, just to share with you, immersivity here, we're not planning on VR or anything like that. Our goal, like from the very first day that it's being established, is that this is a second chance for people to, to gain some qualifications. And therefore, we have to make it accessible to everyone and anyone. And for that, we were thinking about if we can reach out, we'll be able to scale to remote areas. And therefore, our sims um, will be accessible in four ways. Number one is if you have internet access, you'll get all the interactivity that it, you know, with all the animated interactions from the learning activities. Number two, if you have minimal bandwidth, we want to make it, um, um, how do I say, automatic uh, change in the load, so it becomes very lightweight when you're downloading something. So that will trigger the platform to just switch the mode and make it lightweight. Um, we want to make it offline. That means that even using a refurbished or um, laptop computer with very, you know, very minimal kind of um, process, processor, for instance, you'll be able to learn it offline as well, just using the pen drive and still be able to get all the interactivity in there. And the fourth one is that you can download it and have it as a hard copy. So there are four ways to do that. So our main intention is to scale to remote areas to make sure that you know whatever that we can offer in, in our skilling and in, in giving them uh, you know qualifications, that everybody's able to to be part of the ODL education. And that's about it. Do we have time for this? We don't have time for this. This is a, it's a video of Lex Do you want it? Yes, yes, yes. I want to see. <laughs> <laughs> My time is up, Possibly. basically. Welcome to FlexLearn, your online learning classroom. FlexLearn brings your learning tools together to one easy to use platform. This learning experience will provide streamlined modern look and feel to courses that can be accessed on any device such as your phone, tablet, or desktop. Log into FlexLearn by using your full WOU email address and password. All your registered courses will appear under My Courses widget. Each course has its own home page.
There is a content section where you can view and interact with the materials, assignments, quizzes, and activities in your course. Let's take a look at some of the features available in FlexLearn courses. Similar layout are used in all courses so you can quickly locate in a consistent place what you are looking for. If you ever feel the need for a pause from reading, you can simply navigate to the game zone. Additionally, you can choose to designate the specific amount of time you'd like to allocate for reading the content. For easy access to FlexLearn, download the Brightspace Pulse app on your mobile device via Google Play or App Store. To learn more about FlexLearn learning environment, reach out to us at lmsteam at wou.edu.my. Thank you. 